today, there's an issue. People of all ages are getting depressed, they're losing their mental entertainment for knowledge, and they're just losing their individuality. They're slowly conforming to the go home, go to work, repeat cycle, pretty much. This is a cycle we were told when, that when we grow up that we're going to be going into. Scientific studies have proven and shown that reading is one of the best ways to fix this issue. And I want to indulge you to read at least one book a month, no matter the genre. Doesn't matter. So first off, I am an avid reader. I've realized that reading has always improved my mental health. And because of this, I decided I wanted to see if there was research to back me up. And there was. It does improve your mental health. It reduces stress. In 2009, there was a study of the effect of yoga, humor, and reading on the stress levels of students. So it showed that about 30 minutes of reading lowers the heart rate, it lowers blood pressure, and psychological feelings of distress. And that was almost completely equal to how much yoga and humor reduces stress levels. Um, and reducing stress is very important, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But going on, uh, reading also increases your empathical relations. This means you'll be able to understand other people's emotions better. So essentially, uh, research shows that fictional readers, people who read fiction, uh, have something called a theory of mind. Theory of mind is what is called or, sorry, it's not what it's called, is defined as having a heightened ability to understand the feelings and beliefs of other people using skills essential for uh, creating, navigating, and maintaining different social relationships. This allows people to make friends and keep them, once again, assisting in alleviating depression. It doesn't fix it, but it helps. So, alleviating depression is one of the big things that I have found reading helps with, like I said earlier. So, this reading allows a reader to take themselves out of a situation they don't want to be in. It's temporary, but it helps. I would know. So, through the reader's imagination, they are immersed into a different world, time, and space where their issues do not exist and they don't have to worry about it. And this allows the sense of being consoled or as if they're not alone, like a lot of people with depression feel. So essentially, these feelings of consolation and isolation are being alleviated through just reading a book. And there was a British scholar, his name was Sir Roger Scruton. And a lot of people were talking to him and they're just like, you're wrong, there's no way reading can help. And one of the main things he always fought them with was that consolation from imaginary things is not imaginary consolation. If it's consoling you and it's helping, then it matters. And a lot of people took this to heart, especially in the United Kingdom. So the United Kingdom National Health Service actually starts started prescribing self-help books made by medical experts to help certain health conditions. Now, this is called bibliotherapy. Bibliotherapy has been very popular in medical treatment for depression since ancient Greece. And it just blows my mind that people have been thinking that reading helps for so long. But not only does depression Reading help with depression, empathy, and stress. It helps to improve most brain function and memory. So, research shows it fights Alzheimer's and dementia. It reduces your memory decline by about 30%, and it helps to expo expand your vocabulary. And this is through something that they call the Matthew effect, saying the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, based on like Bible verse 5, 13, or 16, or something like that. But this is getting it applied to vocabulary, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Um, and not only does it increase the vocabulary, it increases your 
testing scores due to an easier retainment of information correlated with reading. Look at that. Reading's important. <laughs> this is done through strengthening the brain function. It involves pretty much reading involves pretty much a network of circuits and signals in the brain that get stronger as time goes on. So you start reading when you're little and you keep reading as you get older and older and older and your brain circuits are gonna get smarter and stronger and more sophisticated. And MRI scans have actually shown that the brain connectivity really increases basically when you're just reading. Um, and since reading is good for both mental health and improving brain function, I wondered if it could also help physically. And to my surprise, it does, just not in the way that you would assume. So, physical health, it is recommended as a sleep aid. So doctors recommend reading should be done as a part of sleep schedule. They recommend print books, but reading on a screen works as well, they just don't recommend it. Um, it raises endorphin levels, the brain reduces accumulated stress to sleep easier, and it aids in creating a restful environment. Again, the endorphins. The endorphins released while reading are subtle enough to allow for relaxation instead of like getting, oh yes, I feel good, and then getting a small little adrenaline spike. Again, we're going to talk about this because this is really important. It's a stress reducer. We're talking about this again. So, stress causes health problems. Stress has a hand in almost 50% of all health problems. So a study shows it can cause heart disease, stress can cause heart disease, worsen asthma, increase obesity, worsen diabetes, and generally just weaken the immune system. And these studies have shown that reading is 300% more effective than reducing st at reducing stress than going for a walk. It slows the heart rate, relaxes muscles, mimics meditation pretty much, which also reduces stress. Reading is found to help in so many parts of life, from mental health to physical health, and from a young age to when you're old and unable to walk. It's one of the most important tools we can use to live our best lives. Live our best lives. It's so important to do this. Reading is something I personally hold close to my heart. I have personally always felt that reading should be a part of everybody's day-to-day -day life. And it not only helps me, but it helps improve my life. So much research has proven that reading is something that we need. We need to improve our health and improve our minds overall. It's completely fine if you don't like reading. I'm not going to force you to go home and pick up a book. That's not how it's going to work. In fact, you might hate reading so much you're going to look at a book and you're going to throw it out the window and be like, goodbye. But still, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to find a book in any genre of any length and I want to challenge you to read it. Not just for your health, but for your future. Because your future depends on your health. 